if you're wondering how you can create the Captain America shield in Illustrator, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years, and in this Battle Task Plus tutorial, I put my experience to use, as I show you step by step how you can create this Captain America shield using Adobe Illustrator. Before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements, where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more. That's millions of creative assets, all ready to use and with a simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Now let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop-down menu. Set the width and the height to 850 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can create your document. For the beginning, let's go to window in the menu bar and open all the panels that have this check mark. Make sure that the control panel is active and then go to toolbars and advanced, which will give you access to all your tools. Now go to view and show grid to enable the grid. Go again to view, but this time select snap to grid to enable the snap to grid feature. And for this tutorial, you need a grid line every five pixels. So let's go to edit, preferences, guides and grid. Just enter five in this grid line every box and click OK to apply the changes. Let's start by selecting the ellipse tool from your toolbar. Simply click on your artboard to create a 290 pixel circle. Keep it selected. For the beginning, remove the stroke color. Select the fill and replace the color with 228, 23 and 28. Now move to the control panel and make sure that the alignment is set to artboard. And then just click these two buttons to easily move your circle to the center of the artboard. Let's press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on this shape. Keep it selected and go to Object, Path and Offset Path. Set the offset to minus 25 pixels. Click OK to create this new shape. Let's fill it with white. Then go again to Object, Path and Offset Path. Keep this offset, click OK. Now you can use the eyedropper tool to easily fill the smaller circle with this red. Keep the smaller circle selected and go one more time to object, path and offset path. Keep this offset, click OK. And let's fill this shape with 22, 77 and 157. Continue with the selection tool and use it to select this larger circle. Press Ctrl C to copy it and then Ctrl and F twice, which will add two copies in the same place. Make sure that you select just the top copy and press the up arrow key once, which will move your selection five pixels up. Now hold down the shift key to add to your selection the other copy of your larger circle. And then you need to click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Fill this new shape with black. And remember to change the blending mode to soft light. When you're done, reselect this larger circle and press again Ctrl and F twice, which will add another two copies in front. Select the top copy and this time press the up arrow key twice, which will move your selection 10 pixels up. Select both of these copies. Again, click this minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Fill the resulting shape with black. And again, change the blending mode to soft light. Next, you'll need the rectangle tool, so select it from your toolbar. Click on your arbor to create a 130 by 45 pixels rectangle. Fill it with white and move it in this position. Keep it selected and let's switch to the direct selection tool so that you can select these two points. Keep in mind that you need to hold down the shift key to add to your selection this second point. And then go to object, path and average. Just check this both box and click OK to turn your rectangle into a triangle. 
reselect the rectangle tool and this time use it to create an 80 by 125 pixels rectangle. Let's move it in this exact position. Again, use the direct selection tool to select these two points and go to object, path and average. Keep the both box checked and click OK. Select this entire triangle and go to object, path and add anchor points. And then select just this point and move it 30 pixels up like this. Keep in mind that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 30 pixels. Now hold down the shift key to select both shapes that make up your star and merge them using the unite button from the pathfinder panel. Move to the appearance panel and let's add a black stroke. Increase the weight of the stroke to 2 pixels and align it to inside. Also lower the opacity to 3% and change the blending mode to multiply. And then go to effect, path and offset path. Set the offset to minus 7 pixels. Click OK to apply this effect. And then make sure that your entire path is selected and let's apply a warp effect. Go to effect warp and fisheye. Drag this bend slider to only 20 pixels. Click OK. Make sure that nothing is selected and press again Ctrl and F which will add a new copy of your red circle on top of the design. Select the fill and replace the color with a radial gradient using this button. Keep this gradient and go to object and expand. Make sure that you're checking the gradient mesh box and click OK. Now you need to ungroup this group, so go to object and ungroup. Then you need to unclip this group, so go to object, clip in mask and release. Select the shape which served as the clipping mask and remove it. And then select the remaining mesh. Focus on the control panel and first of all make sure that this box is checked. And then lower the height to 290 pixels. Now that you've got your mesh, let's use the mesh tool to add some extra points. Start with one in this point. Go diagonally and add another one somewhat like this. Then add one in this point, and finally another one diagonally in this point. Once you're done, switch to the direct selection tool as you'll need it to select the mesh points to change their color. First of all, let's lock the rest of the ships from your design. Now click and drag to select all of these mesh points. Hold down the shift key to add to your selection these two mesh points and then replace the color with 255, 255 and 240. Continue with these two points and let's set the color to 255, 255 and 245. Then select these two points and set the color to 87, 89 and 91. And then finally select these two points, add to your selection these two points, this one and also this one. And you'll need to set the color to 130, 133 and 135. Now use the selection tool to select your entire mesh and change the blending mode to multiply. Deselect your mesh and press again Ctrl and F to add a new copy of this red circle. Replace the red with black. Select the fill from the appearance panel. Change the blending mode to overlay. And then go to effect, path and offset path. Set the offset to minus 2 pixels. Click OK. Make sure that your fill is still selected and go to effect artistic and film grain. Drag these sliders to 20, 0 and 10. Click OK. Again make sure that your fill is selected and let's go to effect, blur and radial blur. Set the amount to 100. Check the spin and best boxes. 
click OK to apply this effect and return to the appearance panel to add a second fill for your selection. Just click this button, keep this new fill selected and change the blending mode to multiply. Also lower the opacity to 70% and then apply a radial gradient. Let's focus on the gradient sliders to adjust this gradient. First of all, double click this one, change the color mode to RGB, keep the color set to black, but lower the opacity to 70%. Then select this other gradient slider. Let's move it to the right and set the location to 85%. Double click it and change the color mode to RGB. Keep the color set to white, but lower the opacity to 50%. Let's add a new gradient slider. Double click it and make sure that the color is set to white. Lower the opacity to 20% and the location to 60%. And then add one more gradient slider, move it all the way to the left, double click it and change the color to black. And also lower the opacity to 0%. When you're done adjusting this gradient, get back to the appearance panel to add a black stroke. Align it to inside and keep the weight set to 1 pixel. Change the blending mode of this stroke to overlay and lower the opacity to 15%. And then add a second stroke using this button. This one should be white. Keep it aligned to inside and keep the weight set to 1 pixel. Change the blending mode to soft light and don't forget to also apply an offset path effect. Set the offset to minus 1 pixel and click OK to apply this effect. Continue with the ellipse tool and use it to create a 130 by 60 pixels shape. Fill it with black, remove the stroke color, let's move it in this position. Change the blending mode of this shape to multiply and lower the opacity to 60%. And then go to Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Set the radius to 20 pixels and click OK to apply this effect. Reselect the ellipse tool from your toolbar and this time create a 140 by 75 pixels shape. This one should be white. Move it in this exact position. Change the blending mode to color dodge and lower the opacity to 20%. And then go again to effect, blur, Gaussian blur. This time you need to set the radius to 15 pixels and click OK to apply the effect. Finally, let's add a simple background for this design. First of all, press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire artboard. Select the rectangle tool and use it to create a shape which will cover your entire artboard. Move it to the center of the artboard using these two buttons. Right click it and send it to back. Select the fill and replace the color with 50, 55 and 75. Add a second fill for this shape and make it black. Change the blending mode of this black fill to multiply and also lower the opacity to 10%. And then go to Effect, Artistic and Film Grain. Keep the settings as they are. Click OK to apply this effect. Move to the Layers panel to unlock this button circle. Select it and then go to Effect, Stylize and Drop Shadow. Start by changing the blending mode to normal, lower the opacity to 20%, set the offset values to 0 and 1, decrease the blur to 0 pixels, make sure that the color is set to black, and then you can click OK to apply this first drop shadow effect. Continue and add the second one. For this one, you need to lower the opacity to 15% and increase the vertical offset to 2 pixels. Click OK to apply it and then add a new drop shadow effect. 
Again, load the opacity to 10% and increase the vertical offset to 3 pixels. Click OK and let's add one more drop shadow effect. Change the blending mode to soft light. Increase the opacity to 40%, the vertical offset to 5 pixels and the blur to 15 pixels. Click OK to apply this effect and reselect the rectangle tool from your toolbar to also add a long shadow. Start with a 290 by 430 pixels shape. Move it in this exact position. Drag it behind the rest of the ships that make up your shield. Select the fill and apply a linear gradient. You can replace it with the default one. Set the angle to 90 degrees. And now let's focus on the gradient sliders. Start with this one and just make it black. Do the same for this other gradient slider and also lower the opacity to 0% and set the location to about 15%. Lower the opacity of this shape to 15% and change the blending mode to soft light. And with this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.